Good morning. Um, I'm well, uh, good morning. Welcome to MC for Christ 247 podcast. I'm MT Clark, and this is uh, not just a Zoom meeting, this is a little uh, gathering that we uh, we use for the purpose of glorifying the Lord. And uh, it's a Bible study. And uh, you know, we're joined today with uh, Arthur and Suzanne and Sincati, and my, my wife, Tammy Lynn Clark, as uh, Arthur has sent us the the topic for today, knowing you, Jesus, uh, exclamation point. And um, so um, we welcome you to another episode of uh, Bible study with the Zincatis by saying good morning. Good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Good morning. And uh, it's nice to have my lovely wife, Susanna, back. Mm -hmm. We were up at the airport last night under some weather conditions, but God mm -hmm. is faithful <laughs> indeed. Yeah. And yeah, we, we flew through that rain cloud and it that was something i've never seen before out the window of an airplane was this amount of rain that we were flying through at a great speed and it just looked like glitter it, the, the, mm -hmm. the lights were on it was dark you know it, it was nighttime is dark we flew in at around 10 o'clock and we're coming through the, the the clouds it just this the rain didn't look like rain it looked like glitter just like mm -hmm. piles and piles of that we were going through but you know, God is so faithful because um, mm. <clears throat> I had two people sitting next to me that were not flyers. The, the gentleman mm -hmm. had only, this is only his second time to fly. And uh, the lady, she was flying back from um, visiting with some friends that she herself was not a very experienced flyer. And the, the pilot kept saying, okay, we're going to be hitting some turbulence. It's going to get bad. It's going to, you know, everybody calm down. We're, you know, we, uh, making all the stewards sit down and no one's going to walk through the cabin and check to make sure that you're doing the right thing, blah, blah, blah. And I just said, you know, Lord, these people don't need to experience this. They need to just get home. And it was amazing how God just kind of like kept that plane from having that bumpity, bumpity, bump. It just kind of like every now and then we go, hmm, hmm. I say, well, the wind knows his voice. So just calm down and just all of a sudden we're down and we're landing and they're like, that wasn't so bad. I said, nope, because we were praying, remember? Mm -hmm. So we really had a, a nice time of talking about the Lord and, mm -hmm. and, yeah. time, and then experiencing his goodness. And I was praying on the other end because I was looking at the radar and <laughs> <laughs> we were flying through. It didn't yeah. look uh, too promising. Well, but we got uh, home. God's good. God's indeed, faithful. God, God. And Lord, we exalt you and praise you this morning mm -hmm. because of this witness and because of uh, just who you are. You have revealed yourself um, as God, and we're so grateful for that, Lord God. We're grateful that we don't, uh, um, we're not compelled to worship a block of wood or um, uh, a, a bronze statue or anything that just has no power or dimension to have a relationship with but you have called us to yourself lord god you called us your children and gathered us in and we're grateful for that this morning we're grateful for your word which is the primary vehicle for our knowing you and uh, we're going to uh, examine your word this morning together as a small community here and uh, be enriched by it Indeed, Holy Spirit, we pray indeed that you would open the eyes of our hearts to know you more, more perfectly. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 There we are. So um, uh, I gave it all away by well, just praying our, our, praying our topic here this morning. <laughs> but knowing, um, knowing you, Jesus, I was just thinking of the King and I getting to know you. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, there is a. It's a lovely uh, yeah. camp song, knowing you. Mm. Getting to know you, getting to know all about you. That one. Not that one. That's not a church no, camp song. No, that was the... Uh, the we'll have to look it up and find it. The King and I, the Joel uh, Brenner. Thing. There is no greater thing. That's that's it. So um, I'd like uh, to have, if I have a little um, uh, indulgence this morning to open with two... Uh, stories or kind of antidotes ah, that um, right. lead into the study <clears throat> and kind of build a kind of prolegomena, the foundation. Remember that word? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, oh, yeah. For preliminary matters, if I remember correctly. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it uh, interested me a while back that we don't see the, the Pharisees in the Old Testament. Um, there's no... There's no sign of these characters <laughs> uh, or the Sadducees, mind you. And so <clears throat> these are two sects of Judaism. Um, there were several or even as much as many in the first century. There were the Essenes, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the, the um, uh, uh, Zealots. Um, and just as there are today. And not exclusive to Judaism, there are sects of Christianity as well. We have, the, we know the Catholics and the Orthodox and the uh, Presbyterians and the Calvinists and the Anabaptists. And so um, there are various sects in Christianity and, and Christianity isn't, you know, exclusive to that as well. As a matter of fact, all religious groups have... Uh, divisiveness within the camp. There are many sects of Buddhism. Um, uh, Islam is subject to the, the two that we know are the Shias and, and the Sunni Sunnis. and the Shiites, right. There are more. There, there are more. So um, we see this kind of uh, division and divisiveness within religious groups. So in the, in the first century, uh, uh, these these folks, the Sadducees and and the uh, uh, and the Sadducees uh, appear on the pages of, of the New Testament, and we know that they don't just appear. They it happens somewhere, uh, I suspect, in in the um, uh, intertestamental uh, period. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, this is a this is the theory of Arthur this morning. So don't go running to your seminary professor to try to. <laughs> Uh, ferret this out or anything, uh, but you're certainly welcome to Google it. But so okay. they, these characters appear somewhere in the intertestamental period, and and what so which was a very turbulent um, uh, time for the Jewish nation, uh, marked by two significant events. One is the uh, the reign and of Ati Antiochus Epiphany around what name. Uh, oh, yeah what a name around 164 uh, uh, BC and he was very cruel uh, to the Jewish nation really trying to crush the people and um, he established he actually built an altar to Zeus in the temple hmm. and um, this whole uh, uh, situation sort of uh, instigated the Maccabean Wars which we you know, know about and, you know, giving birth to the, the Feast of Lights, Hanukkah, et cetera, et cetera. So it occurred to me that now we, we know the Pharisees to be very hyper legalists. Actually, some research that I did last night uh, determined that that was not so much the case. Actually, they were pretty much more the progressives, so to speak. They were, they viewed the law as something that very progressive, progressed with the times and was very uh, 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 malleable, so to speak. It, it was the Sadducees who were very rigid, uh, keeping the, the first five books of, of, the, of the law and, and the extended uh, legal code. But uh, so what occurred to me, especially in the backdrop of Antiochus Epiphanes, was that when people experience or people groups experience a great shock, a great trauma, um, the question wells up in one's heart, we must have done something wrong. What did I do wrong? And uh, coming through the other end of that, the tendency is to say, uh, we never want to go there again. I never want this to happen again. Mm. So, it's not surprising to me that a group of hyper-legalists begin to rise up in the first century, as if to say, um, in some capacity, understanding that what happened was the wrath of God or the consequences of our actions. And we never want that to happen again. So we're going to be very, very, very fastidious 
about keeping the law mm -hmm. so that we don't do anything wrong so that nothing goes wrong you know and that's a that is a a kind of a human tendency so putting that on the shelf for a moment and just keeping that in the back of our minds the other story or, or little antidote that i have is that i sometimes like to when engaging with smart people <clears throat> and that's uh, Usually it has to be a self-assessment. on my the part. Say, it's a very, it's very subjective. <laughs> wow. It usually goes badly, that assessment. But uh, I, I sometimes like to ask the question and say, um, assuming that knowledge is cumulative, which I, I think it is. I think that was a safe assumption because we, we know things and you can't really unknow things and we stand on the shoulders of things that we already know. And so knowledge and, and growth and advancement is cumulative. Would you be willing to say that we know God more today, now, than we did 2000 years ago? Um, and uh, I think if you go to the Christian bookshop and you look at the volumes that are written, um, uh -huh. you know, one, <laughs> might be <laughs> uh, uh, tempted to say, oh, yeah, by all means. Mm. But I'm not exactly certain that that such is the case, especially considering the consequences of what we're living <clears throat> these days. Mm. Uh, so to come into our study, knowing you, Jesus, which is a, a, a beautiful um, uh, thought and, and opportunity to, to know him, uh, we start with 1 Corinthians uh, 8, 1, uh, which says, Now concerning things offered to idols, we know that uh, we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a great starting point for today's study. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to read the balance of that uh, chapter uh, or that, uh, path, uh, that thought in in first corinthians one might think that i've uh, been camping in first corinthians these days but this is actually rather uh, um just coincidence this passage of scripture in first corinthians 8 1 to 13 is is a corrective response most mm -hmm. likely to direct to a direct question but i sense the holy spirit saying that paul is using this opportunity to speak to more than just the act of eating food <clears throat> offered to idols, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah, I have to say that that this is a timely message. Uh, coming back from Texas after spending time with my mom and you know helping her get through the the hip surgery and all these other kind of things. To which, just as a side note, mm -hmm. I went to, I took her to the uh, surgeon for her checkup on um, yesterday. Today, Sunday, so on Friday, <laughs> what's today? Um, yeah. on, on Friday, and they showed us a, a, a x ray of what her hip looks like. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, the screws that they put in her had to be this big. <laughs> okay, oh my. Like this but big. they were they were like this big, you know. Yeah, they're really, I, I, really big in Texas. I never <laughs> everything seen is big in Texas, <laughs> such huge screws i mean they were the length of her the bone and there were three of them and they were like giant screw thing and i was like holy cannoli it's almost <laughs> like that's more knowledge than i need to know right <laughs> but yet it was something important for us to understand and know for my mother to understand because she was like what did they do to me and i said well i'm sure the doctor will help us and sure enough he did mm. but the knowledge of, of that that we have to be able to help people and repair people the medical knowledge mm. we have is, the intellectual knowledge we have just sometimes it just it just goes out the window because while i was there for 10 days they found you know four people drowned in a local lake and they found there were several shootings there were several you know there mm -hmm. all these kind of things it's like people may have a lot of knowledge but they're not using it well well, they're mm. just angry and they're just you know mm. it's just yeah. it's just yeah it's not using the knowledge of christ or the knowledge mm -hmm. of love 
they're just it's just kind of crazy but they all have knowledge you see it on the news channels and you say, oh mm. we know we know what's going on we know what's going on mm. we know what's going on. I was like we don't know anything yeah, apparently the knowledge is stirring people up into fear um, and it's national news is really pointing towards right oh, yeah. random shootings that are happening when people don't know people uh, locally someone uh, right a young woman was killed because she drove into somebody's driveway and they decided to kill her you know to shoot her oh um and yeah, that's like right, right across the road right next to so, um so yeah, yeah, it's scary out there. In fact, my manager on Friday uh, came out to see us at our job site and told us to make sure we contact our customers before we show up, um, just so to mm. because of everything that's happening yeah. to keep us safe. You know, because if yeah. the, the phone guys show up, yeah. uh, they might you know pick us off. I guess, but uh, you know, so it's it's scary. <laughs> you know, the knowledge that's out there can stir people up in the wrong way and cause fear. Exactly. And, was tragedy yeah. indeed lots of fear lots of fear i think that probably was the biggest thing that i did to help my mother these last 10 days was you know to quell the fears that she had um yeah. about yeah. falling about what had happened about the uh, the delirium that that kind of seeps in when you've had that much anesthesia and you're 91 years old mm -hmm. um but that was probably the biggest thing that I did for her this this uh, week was just kind of constantly saying, you're fine, you're safe, things are okay, we're going to keep moving forward, you're, you're getting well, things are good. <laughs> and just, you know, praying with her and just talking about Jesus with her and just moving forward, you know. Mm. So um, speaking of moving forward, mm -hmm. um, we engage the... Uh, understanding that uh, that uh, Paul says in verse four of our Corinthians passage that an idol is nothing, and I just you know want to emphasize you that. Need to know that. <laughs> that idol, you need to know that. You know that's you the need point. To know that an idol is nothing. Know that. I, uh, I cited uh, Isaiah uh, 44, 13 to twenty, which is a great passage about uh, uh, idols and idolatry and. And uh, it says the craftsman sketches out his rule or stretches out his rule. He marks one out with chalk. He fashions it with the plane. He marks it out with a compass, the compass, and makes it like the figure of a man, according to the beauty of a man, that it may remain in the house. He cuts down cedars for himself and takes the cypress and the oak. He secures for himself among the trees of the forest. He plants a pine and the rain uh, nourishes it. Then it shall be for a man to burn, for he will take some of it and warm himself. Yes, he kindles it and bakes bread. Indeed, he makes a god and worships it. He makes it a carved image and falls down to it. He burns half of it with the fire and with half he eats meat. He roasts uh, a roast and is satisfied. <clears throat> he even warms himself and says, ah, I am warm. I have seen this fire. And the rest of it he makes into a god, his carved image. He falls down before it and worships it, prays to it and says, deliver me for you are my god. And they do not know nor understand for <clears throat> he has uh, shut uh, their eyes so that they cannot see and their mm -hmm. hearts so that they cannot understand. No one considers in his heart, nor is their knowledge, nor understanding to say, I have burned half of it in the fire. Yes, I have also baked bread on its coals. I have roasted meat and eaten it. And shall I make the rest of it an abomination? Shall I fall down before a block of wood? <laughs> he feeds on... He feeds on ashes and uh, deceived uh, as a deceived heart has turned him aside and he cannot deliver his soul nor say there is there not a lie in my right hand. Wow, boy, that's a snapshot of an idol right there. Um, so. I think it's also a snapshot, not just of a physical idol, but, but there are so many spiritual idols that we we raise up. Um, Mark, I'm sure you deal with a lot of that with your, your well, it's, it's 
Yeah, yeah, it's funny because I think we really tripped on something here. Um, you know, based yeah, on, or, maybe this is, or maybe this is where you're leading us. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but um, basically, you know, all the the, the whole idea behind an idol is, um, and if we think about the first, you know, the first real uh, one of the first real pictures of idolatry in the Old Testament. Uh, Moses went away, and while he was gone, people got restless and made an idol. And yes. the reason why they do this is out of fear of the big scary world. Um, and you know, basically, they they wanted to manipulate um, reality. They wanted to uh, feel safe. They wanted to mm -hmm. get rains for their crops. They wanted to do all these things, and you know. Um, they decided they came up with their own ideas and their own versions of God that were more pleasing and you know you know basically yeah. something you could lay your hands on and bow down to wow. and, um, <laughs> because because they and it was all out of fear because they they wanted to have that that safety or that provision through these these idols and thus you know oh my god's better than your gods i prayed to mine and i actually got blessed well your god doesn't do anything and i mean that's that's um a, a simple way to put it but that's really what's sort of happening um you know in in the old testament and, and the development of all these different religions and everything is is basically who are you gonna who are you going to trust but the thing is uh all of this is happening in a spiritual, uh, you know, a world of 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 light and darkness. Um, mm -hmm. There's the one true God, um, but then there's also the fear, you know, the sons of God, as they talk about in Job. You know, gathered before uh, the yep. Lord, and those are the other spiritual forces of darkness, basically, uh, that were given dominion over the earth when man when man surrendered it to Satan. Um, you know, basically that there's these aren't idols are nothing but the spiritual deities behind them or you know i don't i shouldn't say deities but uh, you know demons uh behind yeah. them basically can give you power can you know if you worship them they will give you things that's why satan said you know to jesus worship me and i'll give you these things and he had something to, he had he did have power right. And, right. you know witch doctors and, mm -hmm. and all yes, those such demonstrate their spiritual mm -hmm. power through this you know and, and witches and everyone you know something's happening there it just happens to be you know from evil <laughs> rather than good and so we have to know that, yeah. that you know as the, isaiah points out this is nothing but a lump of wood however um the name you put towards it like ball or ashtara or um chemis or you know uh, molek um, you know, these uh, names represent spiritual entities that, you know, want your worship. And um, yeah. now yes. uh, Jonathan Kahn's book, The Return of the Gods, is a great exposition on um, how America and Western civilization has turned away from Christianity. And these other gods have come rushing in. And he has a book on how... You know, Wall Street's bull represents ball, mm -hmm. um, and how um, uh, yeah. Astra is given worship through all the porn industry and and sex, and Chemish is you know the god of abortion, and you know how it's it's quite an allegory, um, you know, basically par prophetic vision of what's happened when when you take the good out of the house, the spirit yeah. of God, something's gonna come in, right. and uh, unfortunately, these idols, um, you know. Uh, have things behind them. So. Yeah, there are no vacuums uh, right. uh, indeed, and something will in, indeed move in, and there's uh, plenty of opportunity, and the uh, <clears throat> realm of darkness is, is anxious to, to draw us away from the, from the one true God. Mm -hmm. uh, I had this other uh, passage uh, from mm -hmm. Psalms 115, verses 4 to 8. It says, their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands, they have mouths, but they do not speak. Eyes they have, but they do not see. They have ears, but they do not hear. Noses they have, but they do not smell. They have hands, but they do not handle. Feet they have, but they do not walk. Nor do they mutter uh, through their uh, throat. Those who make them are like them. Mm -hmm. So is everyone who trusts in them. I think right. that's 
powerful that's, word that at the end there for eight. Those who make them are like them. Yeah, like empty and without hope, you know, and with, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. So I said here in the in the study, uh, sort of um, uh, veering off of what uh, or building on top of what Mark just said, that it, the indeed an, an idol is nothing except what we make it uh, to to be by way of conscience, mm -hmm. uh, and so our Corinthians uh, passage flushes that out more. Conscience is an inner what is an inner. <clears throat> Uh, feeling or voice viewed as acting as a guide uh, to the right to righteousness or wrongness of one's behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think this is a good a point to read the first Corinthians passage uh, 1 to uh, 13. Uh, Mark, do you have that? Can you? Yeah, I got that? That. Let, me, let me pick that up. Let's see. First Corinthians chapter 8. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, chapter 8. And now concerning things offered to idols, we know that we have all knowledge. We all have knowledge. Sorry, that's a little different. <laughs> no, that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. And if anyone thinks that he knows anything, he knows nothing yet as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, this one is known by him. Therefore, uh, concerning the eating of things offered to idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world and that there is no other God but one. For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, uh, and as there are many gods and many lords, yet for us, there is one, for us, there is one God, the Father, of whom are all things and we for him, and one God, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we live however there is not in everyone that knowledge for some with consciousness of of the idol uh until now eat it as a thing offered to an idol and their conscience being weak is defiled but food does not commend us to god for neither if we eat are we the better nor if we do not eat are we the worse but beware, lest somehow this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to those who are weak. For if anyone sees you have you who have knowledge eating in an idol's temple, will not the conscience of him who is weak be emboldened to eat those things offered to idols? And because of your knowledge, shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died? But when you thus sin against the brethren and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never again eat meat, lest I make my brother stumble. All right. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we see in the uh, uh, first commandment uh, that you shall have no other gods before me. Mm -hmm. Exodus 23. Verse 5 goes on of the same chapter goes on to say, I am a jealous God. Um. This jealousy is for us. God is is jealous for us, and, and we should be flattered, <laughs> to say the least, about that. Um, that our God is is both jealous and zealous for us. The uh, number one accusation that God brings against the children of Israel um, in the Old Testament is idolatry, mm -hmm. idolatry, which He compares to uh, adultery. Well, that's so, because we, we know about the subject, the marriage of the Lamb. That that a lot of His um, points or parables or any of those things had to do with with the marriage situation with the yeah husband and wife situation with with and you know um in the old testament it often says you know you you committed adultery against me by going after other gods exactly um <laughs> we see that the marriage is a is a type and a motif of uh, yeah. our <laughs> relationship with christ Right. Well, when, uh, when, when, when Moses received the Ten Commandments, you know, he brought the, the law to the people and he said, you know, will you, Israel, take <laughs> the Lord yep. your God as your God? And and God, you know, took Israel as his people. So yep. and that, yep. you know, it's a type of marriage when they agreed, you know, will you obey the Lord? And they were like, yes, we will. And he threw blood on them and basically <laughs> blood covenant. 
and you know, they make so it married married to one another in that sense. And so yes. when they went into Canaan and started to hang out with the people of Canaan who had their own gods, um, they went astray and they started to follow the gods of the other of uh, the Canaanites. Right. Yeah. Yes, we're really, you know, um, we're really committing idolatry, uh, you know, basically uh, and adultery. Um, and the picture we get in Corinthians, I think, sort of, you know, sort of indicates like, hey, you know, it's nothing. You can eat the meat. But if you do and somebody else thinks you're actually worshiping the other God by eating this, meat, right. they might say, hey, that God is just as good as the God of Christianity or or whatever right. and corrupt themselves. Yep. Or if they have or they feel that they're sinning by doing it, you know, you're leading them into sin. So yep. either way, you know, you, you want to be conscious of um, what your brother is doing and, and try to represent the kingdom the best you can and change your behavior to help your brother rather than declaring your liberty. Um, you know, some people will, let, will say they have the liberty to drink, but for the, you know, I, I can drink all I want. And then the alcoholic goes, that's great. But for him, <laughs> it's a sin. Yeah. Um, because yep. it'll lead him to, into drunkenness and everything that goes with it, and which right. is right. strictly prohibited by the Bible, drunkenness. So that's their, the paradox of drinking is you can drink, but you can't get drunk. <laughs> what? <laughs> but, you know, As so, said so before, yeah. The, that Paul says, you know, the thing, everything, so I, I can do whatever I want, but not everything is good for, good for yeah. me. Yeah. You know, I can I can go bungee jumping, but I don't think that's good for me. Yeah, <laughs> Maybe somebody else can do it. That's but... a sin for me. Bungee jumping. If it a becomes, sin. if it becomes you know a idol where you're going to draw away from least, God and yeah. bungee jump all the time, you know, there you go. Yeah, I mean, some people can do that kind of thing, and that's yeah. great. But you know, for for other people, that's not necessarily the best thought. You know. Yeah, the wages of bungee yeah. jumping <laughs> lead to death. Right. Or, um, <laughs> In uh, don't take that wrong, people. We don't, we're not yeah. bashing bungee jumping. I well, just... <laughs> uh, in Second Corinthians 11 2, Paul goes on to speak to the church in Corinth again and in the church at large, where he says, For I am, I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy, for I have betrothed you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So there's that marriage motif again. Where, we're, we're talking about a, a covenant relationship here. And um, often bogged down in our uh, light afflictions, we, we lose a sense of God's intention towards us. You know, in the old days, um, we used to say the, uh, the father of a young lady used to ask, ask a suitor, uh, what are your intentions towards my daughter? <laughs> so uh, uh, I don't think we do that anymore. Hmm, but uh, well, well we do it voluntarily i was gonna say when i uh, when i when i met tammy lynn's father i said i'm a christian and i intend yeah. to marry my daughter and then he's like oh okay okay then all right good and he said good you know, excellent it's like, and then, oh, sure he does because that makes the father feel very good about things um we know that the church is the bride of christ we see in revelations 21 2 prepared as a, as a bride adorned for her husband and so <clears throat> a little shift right now is we want to really take a look at this this uh knowing business what is what is this about what what, what is paul <laughs> filtering in here about knowing what does he mean by that and <clears throat> there's a sort of knowing such as knowing information we often like to say, I, I know about something, yet we cannot <clears throat> claim to know uh, or about someone, but we, we can't claim to know that, pers know that person. It may um, identify an interest, but not necessarily affection or camaraderieship or any form of intimacy, right? To just, you know, to say, I, I know someone or I know about uh, someone, I know about a lot of historic figures. Uh, and, and yet I can't really claim to, to say that I know them. In this short passage of scripture in 1 Corinthians, which we've already read, we engage, he engages these three similar words in English, knowledge, knows, and known. 
each word has a different shading towards the, the same intent. Knowledge in verse one is gnosis, which means knowing. Um, by implication, knowledge or the knowledge as, as it with science. So this is a, a, a very pragmatic knowledge. Q, even you might say accumulative knowledge. Um, uh, knows, um, edio, edo, means consider, perceive, see, wish, understand, or be aware. We see that in the first part of verse two. And then the, here comes the big one, gnosko, which means um, a prolonged form of a primary verb <clears throat> to know. Absolutely. In a great variety of applications and with many implications. So this um, gnosko is the kind of knowing that God is driving us towards to know him which Jesus speaks about in John 17, verse 3. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. <clears throat> so this is a much richer uh, type uh, and form of knowing. And God is compelling him to, uh, compelling us to know him he knows us very intimately, you know, down to the hairs of our head and uh, our thoughts. And uh, he even says that before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's, uh, he's compelling us and drawing us to know him. He's revealed himself to us, given us the power of personal choice as to whether or not we um, see any value in knowing him or uh, choose to know him or decide uh, somewhere along the way that we want to know him. Uh, sometimes it's, it's that, that very simple engagement, like Mark, you were describing as to why people uh, form idols, because this is, a, this is a scary world. And we want to make sure that the rain comes down on the crops. And we want to make sure that uh, our job is secure and I don't get hit by a bus when I go out on the street tomorrow and uh, uh, bad things don't happen to me and, and uh, or my family and, and good sort of uh, flourishes around me. So I, I, I try to navigate life by, by picking and choosing the, the um, uh, icons, you know, of the world and, and, and saying, well, I'll, the, I'll make those my gods. I'll, I'll worship them. You know, I'll, I'll worship my bank account or I'll worship um, um, CNN. Uh, I'll give my attention to those things. And, and, and we do. These are forms of, of, of modern idolatry and people that worship them are like them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, at least that's been my encounter. Yeah. People that worship CNN are like CNN. Oh, right. <laughs> And one of, one of my uh, one of the guys that were in the, the latest round of the Freedom in Christ course, um, I did a lot of financial man management. Well, he did financial management as, as his as his career, and he, one of the things he wanted to repent of was uh, the intake of financial media. Um, he was just obsessed with getting the latest tips and and you know strategies on how to manage his money, and yeah. he confessed that you know through through that he saw a real problem with it because it put his value in in, in his in his portfolio and um and how he had because of the 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 seeking for you know security um in money um he had he had made risks and he, he, had, he had you know made and lost fortunes overnight and things like that you know basically because of that and he and he saw um yeah. You know, through the course, he saw that his security he was in Christ alone, and uh, yeah. that he had to had to dial it back a, a bit to be a good steward, but not necessarily to you know put all his trust in the financial markets and things like that. So it's another, like you said, modern idolatry. I, I think another thing that you pointed out, Mark, when you were talking about you know why people come up with idols, and, and is that they want to be able to hold it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They want to be able to grab it. You trust know, in the lord isn't good enough this becomes an idol because right. i can hold on to it yep mm -hmm. um the you know the statues of buddha become an idol because i can pick it up and move it from one room to the next mm -hmm. uh, you know the, the the things that we worship 
um, whether it's money or food or entertainment or whatever it is, mm -hmm. we can we can put our hands on it. Makes me think, you know, we've been reading through um, Samuel um, as our Bible morning devotion before I left to go to Texas. And one of the things that was so telling that points into this is that the people wanted a king. Yes. They didn't want God right. yeah. who they couldn't grab, who they couldn't see, who they couldn't touch. Yeah. In place, they wanted a king who they could see, who could they could touch, who they could handle. Yeah. yeah. And that's, you know, because that's the yeah. essence of it. We we want the physical peace. We're not willing to 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 accept the spiritual peace. Mm. And I was just kind of glancing over my um my book my Bible here, looking at this First Corinthians because chapter seven was all is all about marriage. But just above that, there's a scripture in chapter six that says, First Corinthians 6, 17, it says, but he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit yeah. with him. Right. You know, our faith is in a, a God we can't see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yet we can see because we see yeah. what he's done. We see where, you know, how he moves. We like see the wind. How he, yeah. he works. But it's not enough for the human being because the human being wants something they can grab a hold of and yeah. keep control of. Yeah. Yeah. But truth be told, I, I get a little warm, fuzzy feeling by looking over in the mm -hmm. corner and I see a little statue of uh, a God that I may have carved out. And and I can look over at that and ponder it and and, and convince myself that all's well with the world because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, my my uh, my little statue is standing Stoically yeah. in the corner there, and uh, yeah. I got my horseshoe <laughs> just right. Uh, my horseshoe just right over horseshoe the Horseshoe position just right to keep all the luck in it, and uh, yeah. you know. And I, I loved uh, um, um, Susanna pointing out the fact that Israel went from a theocracy to like a, a king, um, because that really points to how you know, as as people, as 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 humans. We want to be well liked and be like everybody else, and yeah, yeah. so they said everyone else has got a king. You know why do we have to be this weird God following people? Can't we just have a king like everybody else? Oh. And th that sort of plays out in the world. Like we want to get along with everyone, so can we just right. let whatever go and just you know just just be together with everyone else in the world and coexist? Why do we have to tell people it's only Jesus? You know. And, uh, you know, because mm. we don't want to be disliked or persecuted yeah. um, because because we, you know, point to, to Christ as the way, the truth and the life. Um, you know, it just shows that there's, there's you know, this spiritual, you know, the, the, more and more people are, are declaring themselves non-religious, but, you know, that's sort of a fallacy because they put their faith in something. Yes. Um, will it be social programs, the government, or you know, yes. whatever their sports team? And there's a lot of you know spirituality going there. Put on your rally cap, and you know, <laughs> you know, uh, if if I pray for my team to win, the win. Um, you know, there's stuff like that. And uh, if your team is your idol, and you pray to your idol to win, then aren't you praying? I mean, that's very. It's kind of like a closed circle, right? I mean, you pray. Well, you bring you, God into that one, believe me. <laughs> You pray to your team for your team to win. It doesn't I make any I'm, sense. I know I'm uh, not my team, <laughs> Lord, but you got to help them, Lord. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, this is the the um, <clears throat> the pitfall of I idolatry here. Uh, 1 Corinthians thirteen twelve flushes this uh, thing about knowing out more so. He says, "For we see in a mirror dimly." but then face to face. Now we know in part, but then I shall know just as I am yeah. also am known. Um, this face to face uh, relationship, which the Bible says that uh, Moses uh, had with God is, uh, is a very intimate relationship. The, the Catholics uh, speak of it as being a, a, what they call in Latin, a beatificial relationship with God. Uh, a very uh, intimate uh, knowing is is going on there, <clears throat> and this knowledge transcends just mere information. Uh, information is involved in in the mix, 
right? It, 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 it's important. Um, I, I, I have information about Susanna. I, I did, you know, when we first met, you know, I, I had her checked out. Um, <laughs> I hired a, a private detective. <laughs> Not really. No, I looked through the evidence. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, <clears throat> we're looking for something far more satisfying. Um, <laughs> Pastor Jerome said in uh, his teaching, understanding in the need for the anointing. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, he says, we have uh, substituted the tree of the knowledge of good and evil for the tree of life. You know, we've, we've made that substitution and, uh, and we're stuck with it. You know, we're, we're stuck living in, in this pragmatic world of, of trying to figure everything out and applying uh, our knowledge and our, you know, our understanding of, of what's going on around us to try to navigate the world. Uh, whereas God would invite us to trust him <laughs> and, um, and lean on him and not our own understanding. Uh, some may trust in horses and some may trust in chariots, but I will trust in the word of the Lord. So uh, there's an invitation there to, in, to go in deeper in, in this relationship. And this element of trust is a, an important uh, part of that depth. Pastor Jerome went on to say that, in Genesis 3, 1 through 7, Eve kind of rationalizes the word of God. And rationalism has eclipsed the anointing, uh, exchanged God's covering for man's covering. Uh, so in, in the garden, uh, God was, was our, our covering. He had created a, a, a perfect environment for us. And we walked with him in, in you know, the cool of the afternoon in an un uh, inhibited or unbridled uh, type of relationship. So what I didn't get to here, and I just want to close with, is the dynamic of knowing. And um, how do we, you know, how do we know this God? How do we know this in, in, invisible God that we have been um, uh, introduced to and compelled to know, you know, by virtue of, of revelation and by virtue of the fact that uh, uh, the light bulb has gone on and we say, yeah, uh, okay. And I, I, I do want to know this God. And uh, so how do I do that? You know, do I, um, <clears throat> you know, have to get an invitation, uh, an engraved invitation to the light, to the white house. Uh, is this a formal dinner uh, that we're, we're going to, we just want to uh, hang out with him. And, and, of course, we've mentioned this so many times in the past, and the benchmarks of, of knowing God are, of course, through his word, <laughs> just as with anybody, uh, to know someone is to, is to listen, is to um, give and, and listen with, with attention, you know, genuinely drink in what that person has to say uh, and process it. And uh, also, you know, by virtue of prayer, Prayer is the vehicle by which, you know, we get to express our side of the equation. Uh, and, um, and so, and prayer is, is indeed a, a, a dialogue, I, I always believe, is, is a dialogue with God. Mm. And um, the third way that we get to know God uh, that is becoming, you know, more and more pressing in, in my understanding of, of, of things and kingdom dynamics is by virtue of, of our experiences. And, you know, Christ walked among us and he was a man of sorrows. He, uh, a bruised reed, he would not break or, or uh, a, a smoldering flax, he would not quench. Um, he, and we read about his experiences in, in the gospels, for instance, and he invites us, he invites us into his experience. So as just as, as, as a, for instance, we, <clears throat> Christ was uh, rejected uh, on the cross by the people that he came to save and even his own, his own friends, uh, the, the, other than J the disciple John, the other, the other 12 had, had abandoned him. Obviously Judas betrayed him, Peter denied him. And so when we feel rejection by the people that, that we love, it, it brings us into a kind of, <clears throat> there was a, 
there was an old movie with Fred Astaire about this and, and uh, um, uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, Audrey, Hepburn. Audrey Hepburn, where she, she talked, to, she, was, uh, she was into French existential philosophers and she talked about empathicalism. Empathicalism was the gateway to knowledge, you know, in, in this, uh, it was a comical movie, but uh, empathicalism. Well, we get, to, we get to empathize with Christ through experience in, 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 in both his, his sufferings and his power as well. You know, when we um, experiencing the joy, imagine, imagine the joy that must have precipitated from engaging um, the funeral procession at Naim and suddenly laying hands on that, on that, um, on that coffin and the young man coming back to life. Imagine the joy that must have precipitated from that, that family and the disciples, you know, thinking like, wow, this is, this is amazing. Look at, or um, the, the walking on the water or the feeding of the 5,000. Uh, so we get to know Christ um, by <clears throat> living and recognizing uh, the, the human experience that, that he experienced because he was fully man as well. And, um, and, and how he, uh, uh, how he dealt with life and how he, um, uh, walked through this world, the peace that he carried, the, uh, authority that he carried, um, and, uh, the way he, uh, um, uh, uh, moved through, uh, uh hardships and rejection and, and dark situations uh, and came out the other end. Paul says, you know, that I may know Christ in the power dynamic, the power of his resurrection and yeah. the fel fellowship of his suffering. So these are the three poles and the three manners and the three methodologies by which we, we know God. Um, through Christ, okay, and Christ walking among us. Yes, you know, God the Father is the in invisible entity that we just can't, you know, Hebrews says in, in the faith chapter, uh, you, you, you must have, have faith to, to believe that God is and that he is a rewarder of, um, mm -hmm. of those who diligently seek him. Seek him, yeah. So we're, we're seeking by faith, not by sight, this um, majestic uh, entity, yet not revealed to the five senses. But then he says, but you know what? I'm going to send my son in, into the world. And he's the perfect revelation of God. And so it gives us, it, it, Christ builds a bridge for us with God the Father that we might uh, have some shared experience. You know, Susanna and I, really the metal of our relationship is our shared experiences. When we, when we can uh, sympathize and even empathize with one another as we go through mm -hmm. a circumstance or a situation together. And, um, and, we, and this is how we get to experience life in Christ that we're, we're not alone or abandoned by him, but everything that happens uh, in our lives, he's, he's promised never to leave us or forsake us. And we go through it with him. And in that going through, <clears throat> there's a revelation that happens and there's an intimacy that happens and there's a, there's a deeper knowing that happens. So this is what I, I had hoped and would like to convey you know, for the edification, because knowledge builds up, but the verse says, love edifies. And I, mm -hmm. I think the answer to my original question is, is knowledge cumulative? Well, a, a type of knowledge indeed is, is cumulative, but the knowledge of intimacy is revealed. Um, and it can be revealed all, almost in, instantaneously. That's why, you know, Christianity does not just appeal to the seminary professor. Um, it's, it's equally relevant and, and uh, equally available, you know, to the D student or to, 
<clears throat> uh, anybody with with any disability because it's it's a knowing that involves a, a, a type of of kinship of friendship of intimacy mm -hmm. that surpasses information just just mm -hmm. in information mm -hmm. and and it's it's available to 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 everybody so oftentimes we can get we can actually get bogged down in information oh, um you much. know this is uh, uh we can uh, pastor finn used to say analysis is the paralysis of the church you know we can get so uh deeply in, involved in this word trying to compare verses and figure god out and everything like that and 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 the lord just says you know i just want to spend time with you mm -hmm. I just I, I just want you to enjoy we, we, each other's we enjoy each other's presence. Mm -hmm. The, and, the and first question is um, the purpose of life is to is to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, just finalizing the First Corinthians chapter sixteen verses thirteen and fourteen say, "Watch, stand fast, fast in faith, be brave, be strong." Let all that you do be done with love. Yeah. And I think that that, you know, we always talk about the Corinthian chapters being about love and all that kind of stuff. And it's true because knowledge pops up, but love edifies and builds up. It does. It does. <clears throat> so my encouragement this week and the takeaway is to, um, it's important to know about God, but, um, seek him to a place of of enjoying his presence and in knowing him in that in, in every facet of life mm -hmm. because he's you know he's there in every in every facet of life mm -hmm. he's right there and oftentimes it's it's just an issue or or a matter of us turning our attention to that knowledge and understanding that he's there he's in, mm -hmm. he's in our midst mm -hmm. and he wants to have that that rich intimate beautiful uh, fellowship mm. with us amen, amen. hello mark why don't you close it all and see yeah, absolutely yeah. Uh, lord god heavenly father thank you for bringing us to, together to get today to get to know you more uh lord through considering your word and what it tells us about idols and how that you're jealous for us lord because you made us all, and we're to love and worship you, um, not some created thing of our own imagination or, or a lump of wood, uh, Lord, that um, the, the love, the true love and the true power comes from you, the creator of all things, and the one who demonstrated his love and power uh, through his son, Jesus Christ, uh, to show us uh, the way to go, uh, how we are to live, how, we're, uh, how we are to uh, to everything as an expression of our love for you um and lord we just pray for you to uh to bless today's study to Im impress people to seek you and to know you more uh to know your word to know you through prayer for talking to you and listening to you and seeking you and and the way they live their lives by by following in the footsteps of jesus in, in spirit and in truth and lord we pray for you to bless the gatherings today that that will glorify your name uh, mm -hmm. all the churches out there that we pray for you to bless the pastors that'll speak the truth of the word and encourage people to follow you we pray for you to bless the worship teams that'll give you glory and sing your praises and lord we of course pray for you to you know bless the just the fellowship of the saints so we can come together and encourage one another and and to step out and to reach other people to to have them know you Oh, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. And we love you. And we pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, uh, that, that you know, we're, we, we can never stop knowing the Lord and we'll get to know him more uh, as we go along next week. Um, we invite anyone who's watching or listening to uh, check out our previous Bible studies that are on the podcast and the, uh, and the uh, YouTube channel. Uh, by searching for uh, Bible study with this in Cadiz. Um, I noticed this week there was quite a bit of um, somebody went in and hit like so many of the Bible studies on the on the on the website, the blog um, that was like like 
it must have been 10 or 12 studies that were accessed, um, basically. So somebody's looking at your outlines, Arthur, um, you know, right. basically. Um, yeah. um, I was I was quite impressed by that. And so I know somebody's out there um, listening or, or uh, reviewing the, the, the outline. So we're greatly encouraged by anyone who's listening or, you know, checking us and out. We're in this um, together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and we'll, you know, we, we, we like having company uh, beyond was... four of us for this study. So we appreciate yeah. anyone who's, who's checking it out. And we always encourage you to check out the, uh, the blog and podcast uh, really every day, basically for encouragement or, or whatever um, to, to lead you because, you know, we don't necessarily want to share knowledge as much as we want to share the love of the Lord. Um, that he's yeah. shown to us and that is accessible to anyone who seeks the Lord. Um, right. Mm -hmm. So from mm -hmm. me, Arthur and Susanna and my lovely yes. wife, Tammy Lynn, we, we wish everyone a, a good, happy Sunday and happy. Uh, say God bless you all. God bless. Amen.